Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our live 1 p.m. online worship service. We are victory. We are victory here in Quezon Avenue. My name is Junko. I'm one of the pastors here. And once again, welcome. Now, before we even begin, I just want to encourage everybody who, who's watching us today. Maybe there are those who are sick among you. And I would just want to pray for those who have illnesses, whether it be a simple cold, fever, or, or uh, whatever it is, or even COVID-19. We believe that God is the source of healing. Let me encourage you through this word, and it comes from Proverbs 17, verse 22. This is what it says, A joyful heart is good medicine. But a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Let's just pray today, Lord. We come to you today, Lord God. That, Lord, no matter what we are feeling, Lord God, no matter, Lord, what our illnesses are, Lord, I believe if our spirits are high, Lord, I believe healing will come. And so, Lord, I pray for those whose spirits are crushed, Lord God. Lord, that they are sad because of uh, because they are under the weather or because they are sick right now probably some are doing a quarantine and so lord talagang malungkot sila talagang uh, uh, yung loob nila ay mababa that's why lord today i pray holy spirit may you come upon them and lord lift up their spirits today i pray lord that as we share the word later Lord, their spirits will be fed and healing will come in. This is my prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen. And also, as we worship God, let me just share another word from Scripture to you. It comes from Revelation 5, verse 13. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, To whom, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Now, this is what we expect in heaven. This will what will what will be our experience once we are in heaven. That we will worship the Lord, that we will honor the Lord. Uh, but but why can't we not do it here? Alam niyo po yun, pwede naman natin gawin din yun habang nandito tayo sa mundo. And that's why in a while, we will worship God. Let us open our hearts today as we worship. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you, God, and we, there's one name that we want to honor as we worship. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, as we sing songs, as we worship you, Lord, as we praise God, Lord, I pray that we will honor you and you alone, Lord God. Lord, bless our hearts, God, that, Lord, in our hearts, Ikaw, Lord God, ang gusto namin, Lord, na, na, na ma, ma praise Ikaw, Lord, ang nasa isip namin, Ikaw ang nasa gitna ng aming puso as we sing our songs today. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, church, let's just worship the Lord today. For the grace that is overflowing, for your mercies are new every morning. We worship you, God. We worship you, Lord. Come on, let's sing this together. This is the day of the beginnings. The old is passing. Change is coming by your spirit. It's a new season of revealing. Your word is true, and you will never ever fail. Your presence will lead us. This is the day of the beginnings. The old is past. Oh, we 
is impossible with you. Lord, one thing that we can declare today, God, that you never failed us. You never failed, God. You gave us confidence, Lord, to face our battles. You give us confidence, God, to do more than, than we can do, God. Lord, thank you for allowing us, Lord God, to worship you in spirit and truth. Lord, I pray, God, that you will continue to increase our faith to face our battle, God, because, Lord, we know that you are our confidence and we know that nothing is impossible with you. Lord, thank you. We will continue to honor you, God. We will continue, Lord, to lift your name up high and to give glory to your name. Lord, help us to abide in you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Go ahead, church. You can type amen to our comment section. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Victory Quezon Avenue. This is our 1 p.m. online worship service. My name is Neil, and I'm one of the campus missionaries here. You know, two things that we always do here, and that is to honor God and make disciples. Yeah, and you know, church, as a church, we are called to uh, reach the future leaders of, of, of our society. This is why we endeavor to do whatever it takes to reach the campus, to, to disciple the students, and to raise more leaders, more future leaders in our society. We stop nothing because we believe that we have unique calling and we have the opportunity to reach not just high school and colleges, but also in elementary by the help of our kids' church ministry. We also reach out to the new campuses, especially in Anona's area, and help, at, help not just the students, but educators as well. We'll uh, through our teacher's retreat, conducted in different campuses 
here in Every Nation Campus, Quezon Avenue. Yeah, and we invite you to watch this update video to see more how God moved in the campus ministry. Let's all watch this video. Even when the campuses remained closed in 2021, doors of the gospel continually opened in our midst. Here are the highlights of God's power at work in the lives of our students. Through technology, we held outreach events that inspired many students to share the gospel beyond physical limitations. These events were joint efforts between schools, campus missionaries, and students themselves. Last August 2021, we gathered students across the nation to worship, pray, and encourage one another to pursue God's calling and purpose for their lives. It's inspiring to see next generation leaders rise to the challenge and lead fellow students to the faith. Over 900 students were baptized in water last year alone. We've seen homes and families encounter Jesus together. We've also seen student leaders serve the community in a time of great need. While our world is recovering from a crisis, the next generation is continually being used by God, empowered by His Spirit to be His hands and feet. As schools and universities reopen, we are excited to bring catalytic change to expand our reach in every campus. Thank you for empowering our next generation to rise above its challenge. Your partnership inspires their faith and fuels their passion to change the campus and change the world. Thank you, Church, for your uh, prayers and generosity to support our campus ministry efforts. This year, let's keep to reaching and raising the next generation to be the future leaders of our future. Amen? And so later on, church, uh, we will do our communion. Please prepare a piece of cracker and, or bread or, and a cap of juice. And we will do it to commemorate what the Lord Jesus had done 2,000 years ago. Okay? So for our tithes and offering, let me uh, read to you Matthew 10, verse 7 to 8. And it says here, As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. You know what? This instruction of Jesus Christ to his uh, disciples is um, to, to proclaim the good news. Jesus told them to heal the sick, raise the dead, and cleanse those who have leprosy and drive out demons. Right after that, he uh, reminded them to preach the gospel, to proclaim the gospel, and that they were given the freely, the, the gospel and spiritual gifts. Yeah. This means that to propagate the, pro the gospel, somebody has to proclaim it, and someone has to support the proclamation by their generosity. As we give our tithes and offering, let's always um, be reminded that this is our efforts, this is our uh, collaborative efforts that we will uh, advance the, the kingdom of God. As we do our tithes and offering, it will be, our, it will be the help to, to advance God's kingdom. Amen? Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this privilege to, to do our tithes and offering. Lord, I pray that you will continue, Lord, to um, use us, Lord, to be the channel of your blessings. Lord, I pray that as we do it, Lord, we will do it cheerfully, God, because, Lord, we know that it will contribute in advancing God's kingdom. Lord, thank you for this opportunity once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our center is open every Saturday and Sunday to receive our tithes and offering from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. However, to make it easy and safe for everyone, we encourage you to give online via direct deposit. The details are being flashed on the screen. You can scan the QR code if you want to give via GCash or by visiting victory.org.ph slash give. Option to give to missions, every nation campus, or real life 
is easily available online. You know, church, we believe that whether you give online or on-site, we believe that God will be honored with your giving. God bless the church as you give today. Good afternoon, church. Once again, I'm back. My name is Junko. I'm one of the pastors here. And a while ago, uh, we prayed for healing. And this time around, uh, I'm going to share God's Word. But before that, you know, as a church, Victory, we put a high premium on the next generation. Mahalaga po sa amin ang kabataan, yung next generation. And that's why we have a kids church. In case you do not know, we have a kids church wherein uh, uh, your kids can join online, online lang po ito. And they can learn age-appropriate lessons with regards to the Bible. And uh, so far, our, our online kids church service is... Uh, uh, at 3 p.m., but on February 6, please, please mark your, your calendars. On February 6, our new 10 a.m. online kids' church will start. Ayan, palakpakan naman natin si Lord. Alam naman natin, mahal na mahal ni Lord yung mga kabataan, you know. Uh, and uh, that's why, as a church, kami rin po, we want them to be closer to God. And also, I want to greet some people na kanina pa po sila. They're, they're, they're commenting at our uh, Facebook page and uh, saying hi. So uh, I just want to uh, give back yung kanilang uh, uh, pagbabati pag, uh, there. I want to say hi to N Nell Oriel Daroy. Yan, okay. And uh, hello, Nell. Yvette you hello. Ayan, Roseo Visco. Ayan, from Canada to. From Canada. Hi, bro. And marami po po ko nakita dito. Si Cheska. Jose Cheska, hello. Uh, I believe Cheska is part of our ENC. You know, uh, kanina po yung nag-pray sa atin. That's Kuya Neil. He is one of our campus missionaries and is part of Every Nation Campus, uh, Quezon Avenue and Anonas. Uh, and, um, at para sa kanila po, mahalaga rin yung next generation. You know? So, if you have a, a, young, a young one with you na he's a, he or she's a student, uh, probably high school or even college, i, i, ano nyo na po, tag nyo si Kuya Neil. Ano? Just tag Kuya Neil and uh, uh, Kuya Neil will, will, will get to you later, will message you. Also, uh, Joey Roda and Merle Cortiguera. Ayan, marami po ang <laughs> hi sa inyo. And uh, thank you. Thank you for attending our 1 p.m. live online worship service. And so, we are on week three of our series, Abide. Uh, it's, it's, still, it's still Abide that we are talking about. And as we start, I just want to give a background of our passage today. We find ourselves in John chapter 6 today and Jesus has just done one of the most amazing miracles in the Bible. Do you know what that is? Huh? Can you comment? If you know what that miracle is, one of the, the, one of the in fact, this is one of the greatest talaga po miracles that uh, uh, nagawa ni, ni Jesus. Can you comment? No? Can you comment? Uh, in our ano in our comment section okay uh, hindi po yung parting ng red sea sorry po hindi po yan <laughs> hindi po hindi po okay um, i'm talking about the feeding of the 5000 hmm? from from five pieces of bread five pieces of barley loaves and two pieces of fish the lord jesus christ feeds 5000 people isn't that amazing you see, what's amazing with the Lord Jesus Christ, here we can see His concern for the people physically. He ministers to their stomach. You know what I'm, what I'm saying? But today, in our topic, we will not only see Him minister, 
to the stomach, but we will see the Lord Jesus Christ ministers to the spirit or to the soul as well. Our topic today is the word feeds, feeds our spirit. Our main text comes from John chapter 6, verses 57 to 69, but I will only be reading verses 68 and 69. In reverence to the Word of God, wherever you're, you are, sala set, nasa sala, or nasa bedroom, if you are able, kindly stand up so that we can honor God's Word. John chapter 6, verse 68. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Verse 69. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Join me in prayer today. Lord, today we declare we are in the presence of the Holy One of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why, Lord, today I believe every prayer is, is being heard, every thought is being known by the Lord Jesus Christ. But Lord, today... May we also know Christ's thoughts, Christ's ways, Lord God, through His words. I pray, God, that we will not only learn in terms of head knowledge, Lord, but, Lord, we will practice what we learn every day. Father, would you anoint the preaching of your word today? I pray also that you will give extra amount of understanding, Lord God, to your people today as we see that your word feeds our spirits. May our spirits be fed today as we talk about the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And you can take your seats right now. You can sit down right now. Now the first thing that I want to share to us this afternoon is this. The bread that gives life. In the past weeks, the author of the Gospel of John, the Apostle John himself, has showed to us that Christ is giver of life. Now, in part one of our discussion today, he uses the bread as a metaphor, as a symbol pertaining to life. He informs us that just as bread sustains and nourishes man, so does the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go to verse 57. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever, whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. Now, from our discussion in, discussions in the past weeks, we already know that it is the Father who sent the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ also says, whoever feeds on him shall have life. Now, what does that phrase mean? mean? Hmm? What does that phrase exactly mean? Well, first and foremost, this is not literal. Okay? Don't think of this as something to be understood literally. That Christians, of course, are not cannibals. Okay? But it is a figure of speech. Feeding on Christ means to trust Him, to believe in Him, to trust His words, to believe His words. To have faith anchored on Him. To believe what the gospel is saying. Now, doing this leads to life. This is what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying here. Further on in the next verse. Verse 58. Let's look at the first part. This is the bread that came down from heaven. This is the first part of verse 58. Now, this part of the verse is echoing what verses 50 and 51 is saying, John chapter 6, verses 50 to 51. Now, I will not be reading it anymore uh, so that we can save time, but go ahead and read it later after the service. It points to Jesus as being the bread that comes from heaven. Now, what's unique about this bread? The next part of the verse tells us, not like the bread that the fathers ate and died. Now, Christ, as the bread from heaven, is not like the bread or the manna that their forefathers ate in the desert. Remember when the Jews 
were uh, 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 going around in circles in the desert for 40 years, God gave them sustenance and prov provision by giving them manna. Now, this is echoed from verse 49. Again, I won't read it anymore, but go ahead and check it later. Now, this manna did sustain the Jews, the forefathers of, of, of the Jews presently in this time. But it, it, was, it, but, but it was only temporarily. It sustained the forefathers, their forefathers, only temporarily. What do I mean by that? It could not stop death. In fact, we know that the old generation who came out of Egypt, halos lahat po, lahat po sila namatay. No? They all died in the desert and only uh, Caleb and Joshua were able to enter Canaan. Even Moses was not able to go to Canaan. And this happened because of their unfaithfulness. This happened. They were not able to enter the promised land because of their sinfulness. Again, Joshua and Caleb were the only ones. Now, meanwhile, the last part of the verse reiterates what Christ as the bread from heaven does. Let's go there. This is the last part of verse 58. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Christ as the bread from heaven gives eternal life. Those whose faith is anchored on Him, those who believe on Him, those who believe on His word, their souls will be nourished. Then in verse 59, the last, uh, the last verse for our first point today, we see where the Lord Jesus Christ is uh, sharing or teaching all of this. Let's go there, verse 59. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. Now, take note of this verse because this will play an important part in our discussion later. Now, Jesus taught these things the next day after feeding the 5,000 inside a synagogue. We all know that a synagogue is a place of worship for the Jews. And this, this uh, uh, synagogue was in Capernaum. Now, those looking at, not, not, thus, looking at the verses that we read in our first point today, we can say, Jesus is the bread from heaven that satisfies the soul's hunger. See, as humans, we hunger for all sorts of things. Number one po dyan, yung food. You know, when we fasted two weeks ago, my wife and I, we craved for uh, seafoods. That's why on the last night, on the, our breakthrough night, eh, napakain po kami ng hipon, <laughs> ng seafoods, no? But it's not just food that we crave or hunger for. We hunger for material things. We hunger for affection. We hunger for relevance. And as we live our lives, these cravings are satisfied. Habang umaasenso po tayo, kumikita tayo, nagkakaroon tayo ng material things. Habang tumatanda tayo, nagkakaroon tayo ng iba't ibang relationships. That's why our hunger for relationships uh, become satisfied. As we get promoted in life, we find relevance and we find a lot of things as we live in life. But none of these things can ever satisfy the soul. Hindi po kaya. None of these material things, none of this uh, 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 fame or whatever it is that the world brings you cannot satisfy the soul. That's the reason why some people, even though they are rich and have a lot of things, have everything in life, they are still not satisfied. They still don't have satisfaction because material things does not satisfy the soul. Only Christ can do that. Can you comment that? Only Christ can do that. Now, let's go to the next part of our discussion today. The next thing that I want to share today is this. The Spirit gives life. Jesus tells us, the Spirit also gives life. Let's go to verse 60. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? 
Now, when, we, when, when, when uh, the word disciples is mentioned here, it's good to understand that the Apostle John is not pertaining to the twelve. Hindi po, hindi po tinutukoy dito ni John, yung twelve. But the Apostle John refers generally to all the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ present during this time. Now, the disciples, these disciples, all of them, found it hard to understand what the Lord Jesus Christ was saying in the last verses we read. Hindi po nila maintindahan yung feed on me. You know, those who feed on me will have eternal life. They did not understand that. They did not understand what Christ meant by being the bread that comes from heaven. The bread of life. Hindi po nila magets yon. Hindi po nila maintindihan yon. That's why they said it was a hard saying for them. And do, and do you know what's frustrating with this? Alam niyo po ba ko ano yung in my mind, in my opinion, what's amazingly frustrating with this? See, remember a while ago we were talking that the Lord Jesus Christ taught inside a synagogue. Ang nakaka-frustrate po dito, sa dinami-dami ng tao doon sa sinagog, nandun yung mga kaaway ni Jesus, yung mga Pharisees, nandun yung, nandun yung uh, uh, mga re- religious leaders. It's the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ who complains. Yung po yung, yung, po yung masakit sa akin dito when I was reading this. Eh. The one who doubts Christ is His disciples. Not the Pharisees, not the other people, not the crowd, not the religious Jews, but His own disciples. That's why in the next verse, Jesus questions them. Ito po yung sabi ni Jesus, verse 61. But Jesus, knowing in Himself that His disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Having an idea of how some of His disciples felt, Christ asked them, if they take offense at, at His words. Hmm? That's why today, in the same way, let me ask this question to you. Are you a Christian yet still takes offense in the words of Christ? Probably you, you, you're, you're a married man, Christiano ka, and, and there, may mga kine-question ka kay Lord. For example, you know, you, you find yourself saying, Lord, grabe naman. Eh, wala naman kaming sexual act ng office mate ko. Piniflirt ko lang siya. Yung pagnanasa ko, nasa utak ko lang. Wala naman kaming ginagawa. Well, you know what? The Bible says in Matthew 5, 28, that, you know, if you are lustfully thinking about another, that's already adultery. And adultery is a sin. You know? Probably, minsan sinasabi mo, na-offend ka sa mga words ni Lord. Sinasabi mo, Lord, grabe naman, pinahiya ako nitong kaaway kong to. Pinahiya ako ng taong ito sa maraming tao. Tapos ngayon, nagsusori lang. Gusto mo, patawarin ko. Grabe ka naman, Lord. Nakaka-offend naman yung word mo. Well, that's what the Bible tells us. To forgive 77 times. That if you're angry at another person, it's like murder. Are you offended by this? You're already a disciple of Christ. Tas offended ka dito. Then you're just like them. You're just like the, these disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ that we are talking about. Lord, grabe naman. Love your enemies. Nakaka-open yan, Lord. Grabe ka naman. That's for weaklings. Lord, alpha male to. Alpha male. Tapos, love your enemies. Church, my brothers, friends, if you find yourselves saying things like this or something similar to this, my prayer is that you will run to Christ and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to change your heart. Not to be offended at, at His word, but to accept and have faith and change your ways. Now let's go to the next verse. Verse 62. Then what 
if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before. The disciples are offended or reject the fact that Christ is the bread from heaven. And so he challenges them by saying, what if they saw him ascending to heaven? Of course, this is an allusion to what they will actually see in the future after his death and after his resurrection. Would they now totally trust him? Moreover, in the next verse, verse 63, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I've spoken, you are spirit. To you are spirit and life. The Lord Jesus tells us that the flesh cannot produce genuine spirituality. The flesh cannot produce life. The flesh cannot give us life. But it is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit working powerfully in the words of the Lord Jesus Christ that produces life. Life in our own spirits. Now, how many of you, you believe this? That the Holy Spirit, Spirit works in the words of the Lord Jesus Christ and gives life to our own spirits. Kaya nga, pag nagbabasa ka ng Bible, tumataas yung spirit mo, nagiging strong yung spirit mo. I want to I wanna give you an example. You know, when I became a Christian and started reading God's Word, one verse captured me. Totally po, na-capture ko na itong verse na to. This, would, this verse would dictate the life that I would live up to now. Do you know what that verse is? Ito po yan. Matthew 16, 26. For what, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? Matthew 16, 26. Before I was a Bible reader, I didn't care about people. Hmm? I didn't care about people knowing Christ. Bahala ka sa buhay mo. Kung pupunta ka sa imperno, bahala ka. Anong pakialam ko sa iyo? Kung pupunta ka sa langit, kung pupunta ka sa imperno, wala po akong pakialam. But when I started reading the Word and came upon this verse, nabuhayan po yung spirito ko. All of the sudden, I want to share to the world who the Lord Jesus Christ is in my life. All of the sudden po, lumakas, nagkaroon ako ng boldness. You know, my spirits became high. I, I started leading victory groups. I started, do, started doing one-to-one. -one. I started walking, uh, uh, walking with other people in terms of their walk of faith. I even reached out to my high school friends. I even reached out to my college friends. And because of them, some of them became believers. And, and now, I am a pastor and I have never looked back ever since. And I am thankful to the Lord, mga kapatid, that He allowed me to know His Word. Now, how many of you, you share the same experience? Yung binuhay ng Word, yung Spirit mo, can you type alive? If you share the same experience that I have, na nabuhayan ka, you know, because of God's Word, that you became alive, your spirit became alive, can you type in our comment section, alive? Look at our victory group leaders, alive na alive po yung mga yan. Every Sunday, hindi nagsasawa. They introduce themselves. They want you to get connected to them. That's what I mean. You know, that's how the Spirit lifts your, the Holy Spirit lifts your spirit and encourages you and makes you live. Let's go to the next verse, verse 64. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. Now this verse once again points to the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tandaan niyo po, major theme ng John, yung divinity ni Lord Jesus Christ. See, Christ's divinity is one of the major themes here in this gospel. In his divinity, Christ is omniscient. Ang ibig sabihin lang po noon, all-knowing. Nothing can be hidden from here. And here we see that. We see that proof. Despite what he has said, there are still those who doubt him. And he knows that because he is omniscient. The verse also alludes to Judas who will one day betray him. As for why there are those who doubt, the Lord Jesus Christ explains it in the next verse. Let's read it. Verse 65, and he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. Amidst all 
all the doubt we see in the last few verses we read, Jesus helps us understand just like salvation is a gift, faith is also a gift. No? And it is best given by the Father. So we can learn from verses 60 to 65, what we can learn is this. When we open our hearts to the words of Christ, the Holy Spirit works in us and the Father gives us life-giving faith. That's why today I want to encourage you, if you have a Bible, read it. And while you are reading it, open your hearts to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Pray and tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, capture my heart, capture my will, lead me to wherever you want me to go. Yun po, ipag-pray niyo po yun, you know. To give you the strength, to give you the, the faith. Maybe some of you are in a hopeless situation today and you think that no one can help you. Now, I want to assure you, the words of Christ can give you the hope and the faith to get out of that situation. The, you know, hope, the words of God can make, can give you hope to believe in the impossible. Remember that God is a miracle worker and your faith needs to be anchored on Him. Your faith needs to be upon Him. Baka feeling mo, wala nang pag-asa yung utang mong million-million. You know what? I want to tell you, there's a guy in our businessmen's group here in church. 100 million po yung utang niya. You know? Unti-unti niyang binabayaran. Unti-unti niyang nababayaran. And uh, based from our last uh, talk, halos mababayaran na po niya. And you know what? Buhay na buhay po yung word ni God sa buhay niya. That's my encouragement to you today. Dwell on the feed on the, on the Lord Jesus Christ and on His words. Now, the last thing that I want to share to you today is this. The Holy One of God that gives life. Jesus is not just the bread from heaven. He is the Holy One of God. Let's go to verse 66. After this, many of His disciples turned back and no longer walked with Him. This is the unfortunate thing that happened because of doubt. Because, of, because doubt continued among His disciples, uh, it carried on, some would leave and cease to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Seeing this, in the next verse, Jesus would now turn his attention to the 12. Dito pa lang po, magbibigay ng attention si Jesus dun sa 12. Dun sa talaga mga close-in na disciples niya. And his inner circle. And, and Jesus asks him, them, this question. Let's read it. Next verse, 67. So Jesus said to the 12, Do you want to go away as well? By asking this question, Jesus is actually asking, Do any of you doubt me too? Just like all these people who left doubt me? Are you like any of this, uh, the others who left me? That's what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying here. To which the leader of the group, the spokesperson, one of the closest to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Apostle Peter, would answer in the next verse. Let's read it. Verse 68, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Peter's initial response was to post a hypothetical question. Lord, whom shall we go? By asking this, what Peter is actually saying is that there is no one worthy of his devotion. There is no one worthy of their devotion except the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus is the author of life. His words give life. Further on, in the last verse of our passage today, this is what it says. Verse 69, And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Peter, as the spokesperson of the group, continues to confess not just his own faith, but the collective faith of the 12 disciples. Their declaration is that Jesus is the Holy One of God. By saying this, Jesus reaffirms, by saying this, Peter reaffirms that Jesus is sent by God with the holy mission of reconciling man and God, reconciling man and his Father, giving life along the way to those who are faithful. That's why today, let me encourage you by saying this. Trust Christ. 
Trust Christ and do not doubt His word. For He is the Holy One of God. Do not be like the other disciples who left. Tayo po magtiwala tayo kay Kristo. The truth of the matter is we doubt the words of Christ because of one reason. Because we doubt Christ Himself. We doubt His authority in our lives. Either that or we don't like His authority in our lives. But if we keep it in our hearts that Jesus is the Holy One of God, the one sent to make us holy despite all our imperfections, we will realize it is only the Word of the Lord Jesus Christ that matters. And we should make it the standard on which to live our lives every day. Today, I want to share this last verse to you. It comes from Matthew 4, verse 4. And I'm so sure a lot of you are familiar with this verse. It says, But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Food is not the only source of life. In fact, feeding on earthly food cannot give eternal life. Earthly food is for earthly living. But for life beyond what this world offers, we need spiritual food. And what is that spiritual food? The Word of God. The Lord Jesus Christ Himself. That's why today I want to leave you with this. Feeding on the bread from heaven leads to the kingdom of heaven. Make Jesus the center of your lives. Allow Him to sit on the throne room of your heart. Gawin niyo, pong, gawin niyo pong hari ang Panginoon ng puso ninyo. And without a doubt, heaven is your destination. Eternal life is yours. Join me in prayer today. Lord, we want to thank you. Thank you for every provision that you give us. Lord, salamat sa pagkain na araw-araw mong binibigay sa amin what we call our daily bread, Lord. But Lord, more than our earthly daily bread, we want to thank you, God, because your word nourishes our soul, because your word, your word sustains us. Father, may we continue to grow in your word, Lord God. Lord, that we will hunger more and more for your word, Lord God. Hindi po sa paramihan ng chapter na nababasa yan. It's, it's about understanding your word. It's about living your word every day. It's about people seeing that your word lives in us. Today, I also want to pray for another set of people. There are people who feed on a lot of things, but never on the bread of life, never from the bread of heaven. They feed on their own egos, their feed, they feed on the egos of others, they feed on fame, they feed on money, they feed on whatever glitters except from the bread from heaven. Today, the Lord Jesus Christ is inviting you Feed on me. Accept me as the true sustenance of your life here on earth and after life on earth. If you believe that the Lord Jesus is talking to you, pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, today I realize I feed on a lot of things except the most important, except the most relevant one on your word and on you. That's why today my declaration is enough of all of these things. I want to feed on you. I want to trust you to believe you. I want my faith anchored on you. Today, God, I ask forgiveness of my sins. 
I repent from everything that I have done to rebel against you. And I ask you to be my Lord, my Savior, and my God. Bread of life. From now on, you are the only one who will satisfy me. Bread from heaven. From now on, you are the only one that I will chase after. No longer other things. Thank you, Lord, that my name is now in your book of life. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, we want you to continue to grow. Our victory group leaders want to walk that life of faith with you and help you out. Type connect if you prayed that prayer. Now, also today, we will partake of our communion. Please prepare your elements. Please prepare a piece of cracker or juice that you can use as your elements. Let me encourage you as we partake of communion. Let me read 1 Corinthians 11 verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night He was betrayed took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also He took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Let's pray. Lord, we proclaim, God, that You are the, are the Christ who died upon that cross, Lord. Born from the Virgin Mary, suffered on the cross. After three days, You rose. And the body that was punished, paid for all our sins. Lord, thank You for Your willingness to sacrifice Your body. Let us partake of the bread. Today, Lord, we not only thank you for the body that you sacrificed, but also the blood that flowed from you. Lord, we want to thank you, God, because that blood made it possible for all of us. Our sins are now forgiven. You, your blood washed away our sins, Lord God, and only your blood is capable of that, not the blood of animals, not our own blood, but the blood of the Savior, the blood of the Messiah. Lord, because of the washing of our sins, we now have fellowship with you, with your Father, and with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Let us drink from the cup. Lord, once again, there is hope because of what you did. Lord, in times that we forget that hope, Lord God, would you remind us, Lord God, especially, Lord, in our once-a-month communion, remind us there is hope because you died for us. This is my prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's just continue to worship God right now.
never fail, my God. My heart and my soul confess, God, you're my confidence. He's never failed me. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Jun, for that powerful preaching. You know, church, one thing that uh, reminds me is that material things or temporal things can't satisfy us, but only Jesus can do that. Amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for really, Lord God, feeding our soul, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that you will continue, Lord God, to um, manifest on our lives, God, as we draw near to you. Lord, I pray that as we abide in your word, God, I pray that you will continue, Lord, to, to satisfy our souls, God. Lord, we will always focus on you. We will always rely on you all the days of our lives. Lord, I pray that we will apply everything that we've learned in the preaching. In Jesus' name we pray. Church, receive the Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine to you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone will say, Amen and Amen. God bless you, church. See you next Sunday on our online worship service. Goodbye!